joining us is Robin Bomick, the Chief Business Officer of Manipal Global Skills Academy. Through its various programs, the Manipal Global Skills Academy seeks to address the gap between what the academia is producing and what the industry actually needs. To begin with, what are the most sought after skills in 2023? That's a great question to start with. And uh, the typical answer uh, to that question, if I may kick off uh, with the uh, usual answer that you would get is, is A, B, C, D. And uh, A for artificial intelligence, B for blockchain, C for cybersecurity, D for data science. And I could go on and on till, till Z. Um, these are all uh, very key, critical and very key skills that would make a huge impact across industries. Um, but that's not all, uh, right? So when we talk about, for example, uh, machine learning or we talk about programming languages such as Python, the application of machine learning or Python is across every industry. But at the same time, um, I would also bring out skills that are required from a role and functionality perspective. So for example, India is a services country and uh, some of the growth areas for us are across IT, across banking, across financial services, etc. India today is also becoming the manufacturing hub of the world, right? So we are investing in areas that would include, let's say, prefabrication of uh, semiconductors and, and chip-based industry. India is a big uh, manufacturer of solar energy. Uh, we are actually the largest in the world. And uh, the whole focus on renewables, for example, and renewable energy uh, uh, is another area which is driving industry going forward. And then in the whole popularly known concept of Industry 4.0, uh, which everyone talks about, uh, drives uh, the necessity for a completely new set of skills that are largely driven by, for example, automation, for example, uh, robotics, right? So I would say that beyond the ABCD that I talked about, uh, the new age skills across areas, for example, like renewables and solar power, uh, the biggest demand are for roles like project managers and in, in areas like project management. If you look at high tech manufacturing, the biggest demand are people that who understand uh, automation, people who understand robotics, people who understand process manufacturing, uh, etc. And of course, when you look at some of the new areas like, um, let's say, semiconductor industry, which is coming into India in a big way, um, the bigger design requirements for uh, semicon is really in how, how do you do prefab, how do you do design of chips, right? So even before you do manufacturing of a chipset, uh, you know, the critical skill that's required is the ability to design one. Right. So design thinking kind of areas uh, would impact the overall um, skill journey. Uh, but it kind of spans across a whole variety of new age scaling requirements. So whether it be services, whether it be manufacturing, whether it be uh, sustainable energy, whether it be uh, even areas like construction, for example, the kind of skills that are required are going to be extremely different. Uh, and it's going to span across some of the more popular ones that I mentioned earlier, the ABCD, but also <clears throat> a big function of the role and the, uh, uh, you know, the, the application of that particular technology in a particular industry. So it's going to be a combination of, of all of the above that I just spoke about. Right, that's very interesting. And going forward into the future of work, which are the skills that you think will take prominence in the future? So, uh, Manali, I think, uh, you know, the skill sets are very similar to what I just spoke about. Um, so, for example, uh, there is uh, no uh, industry in the country today which is not experimenting with, uh, with the whole uh, RPA concept. 
So robotics and process automation is possibly the biggest area of investment for most manufacturing companies, uh, including some of the services companies as well. The second area where a lot of companies are now investing very heavily uh, is the whole area of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, uh, as we start automating processes, as we start automating a lot of human driven interactions, and we start replacing some of them with uh, bots, uh, the need of the hour is to start building a lot of intelligent bots that are able to, uh, let's say, self-learn uh, along the way, which is where AI and machine learning really comes into play. Um, the third area I would talk about, which is going to have a very high impact across industries, is uh, blockchain. And uh, while we popularly associate blockchain with cryptocurrency, uh, the applications of blockchain are extremely wide and varied. And it essentially puts in a level of trust within the industry across uh, multiple uh, transactions and interactions that any uh, particular uh, customer or any particular entity would have, which uh, is based, as you would know, on a, on a ledger based kind of a system. In addition to that, uh, when we talk about the future of work, what we have to also uh, be cognizant of is the future of work is not going to necessarily be a nine to six uh, sitting in an office uh, kind of an environment. And when we were hit by COVID in 2020, uh, overnight we all switched from working in an office to working in remote locations. And one of the things that as a workforce we started realizing was the need or the requirement for a lot of soft skills. Um, for example, we talk a lot about technology skills, but we don't really appreciate a lot of soft skills like how do you communicate? Are you able to work in a distributed environment? How are you able to communicate and work effectively, for example, with teams that you might never have met face to face? How do you handle ambiguity? A lot of these are essential drivers of the new age workforce. And as the quality and as the construct of the future of work becomes very different to what we've always been used to, where, for example, if you're sitting across the table from someone and uh, talking to them, you're able to get, uh, let's say, a response mechanism in real time. Whereas when you're interacting with someone on email, uh, the interaction becomes a lot more impersonal, right? Uh, and a lot of people are not able to understand and really segregate between the two. So I think uh, the whole area of soft skills, as we call it, uh, the ability to handle uh, a volatile and a changing work environment or an ambiguous work environment, uh, these are all going to play a huge role going forward as well. Right. And now that you've mentioned soft skills, it leads me to my next question. What are some of the skills that will remain super important no matter how we work or even when the future of work shapes up? And um, I was uh, kind of uh, talking just about that. So I think Manali, the point uh, that I was trying to make uh, to your previous question uh, was that the underlying ability of a human being to work as a part of a larger organization or as a part of a larger team, whether it be in a physical environment or it be in a virtual environment, uh, is essentially what's going to decide their success. Very few roles exist today which work completely in isolation. So for example, even if you're part of a design team, uh, it's quite possible that <clears throat> your design team is spread across uh, you know, four different continents and, and six different countries. Now, that automatically brings in barriers uh, of language, of, uh, you know, time uh, lines are different, uh, you know, people's ability to understand, comprehend and respond and communication skills are very different. 
So how do you start working in this globally integrated supply chain? Um, I think while we are seeing a lot of countries such as India, of course, now coming to the forefront in terms of building uh, what we call as Atma Nirvarta, which is really self-reliance. But at the same time, we work in a global supply chain, which the minute there is an event and political event, let's say in Northern Europe, uh, it impacts the whole world because the supply chains are impacted everywhere. So in such an environment, uh, you know, the kind of skills that people need are boiled down to the basics of being able to communicate clearly and precisely, being able to comprehend clearly and precisely, be able to respond clearly and precisely, right? In a common language, which might not always be a common language like English, for example. So a lot of what's called, again, I'll refer to my soft skills point earlier, continue to remain very valid. Uh, the ability to work in the VUCA world, as we call it, volatile, um, uncertain, you know, there's so much change happening, there's so much ambiguity in the world. That's another key driver for people to be successful. And I would stress on one quality of adaptability, which is very important. I think while most of us might have trained for a certain role or a skill when we were in school or college, does not necessarily mean that we stay with it for the rest of our life. For example, I trained to be an economics graduate and I have never worked in economics. I have spent my entire career in technology. Uh, adaptability is key, right? And uh, I think those people who will continue to adapt and learn and uh, practice new skills will, of course, be able to survive and outlast their peers.